right on the eve of AUKUS. We are now set to confirm as one of the most uh, consequential defence decisions in Australia's history tomorrow. But for all the talk about submarines in AUKUS, I reckon there's a lot of questions that remain for ordinary people. Now, I've had plenty of military briefings in the past, but I'm interested. If people stop me in the street and ask me just basic questions. Why nuclear over conventional and those sorts of things? And if they're asking me, I'm sure you're asking those questions at home. So joining me now, Professor of International Security and Intelligence Studies at ANU, John Blacksland. John, we've been talking about submarines uphill and down dale, but I think for a lot of my viewers, um, it, it's all been in these roundabout uh, strategic terms. I want you to take us through some nitty-gritty mm. stuff here. Uh, tell us why exactly mm. a nuclear sub is better for Australia than what we previously would be going down the path of acquiring conventional diesel-powered submarines. Yeah, great, Peter. Good to be with you. And excellent question. It's a really important one to have clarity on this. One of the things that people don't necessarily have a full appreciation of is that the technology for surveillance has got a lot better. There is now a really high rate of overflight with satellites, particularly Chinese satellites, Russian ones as well, over Australia and over the Indo and the Pacific areas. Uh, and with a, a greater pre prevalence of drones, combine that with artificial intelligence, uh, you have the ability to detect any kind of surface disruption in the ocean. Now, the diesel electric submarine has long been considered, considered stealthy enough because we could do long transits and you know snort, snort for a little bit to recharge the batteries and you know, very unlikely it gets spotted. Of course, now that mean that likelihood has significantly declined. So even if you want to move from Perth to Adelaide to Melbourne to Brisbane to Darwin, just getting around Australia, you can't do that stealthily. So if you can't operate your submarine stealthily, what what the blazes are you doing? Uh, it, submarine's key <coughs> advantage is stealth. So if you compromise stealth you actually need to rethink things. So for a while now, it's been on the cards that we needed something else, but we haven't had anything on offer. So even with the French design, there was some scope there to think about maybe we could go to the nuclear propulsion option down the track. We never went there, obviously, for a variety of reasons we know about. But for Australia, we're in a different predicament to other countries. So if you're a small, a smaller geographically country like Japan or uh, some of the Pacific, uh, countries in Southeast Asia, you might not need to transit very far in your submarine, and you can do that submerged relatively stealthily. For Australia, that no longer applies. So we really had to rethink the business, and that's why nuclear propulsion is the answer. And we'll get to crewing these boats in a moment, but of course, once you go down the path of nuclear, it opens up a lot more area, uh, space inside the submarine, isn't it? And, and it's better potentially, uh, for keeping sub-mariners uh, in the Navy because, I mean, it's one of the toughest jobs. Explain the difference internally as well. So there's quite a big difference internally. When you've got a diesel electric submarine and when you're running submerged, you're running on batteries. So you're running on minimal electric appliances. Uh, you're getting stale air. You're not getting the same kind of... You can't just turn everything on and expect it to work. You're on minimal electricity consumption, which after a few days, let alone a couple of weeks, starts to get a little bit fresh, shall we say. Um, and that's not a terribly you know, nice place to be if you're doing that day in, day out, year in, year out, as submariners are expected to do. With a, with a nuclear propulsion submarine, it's a completely different equation. Firstly, you've got a lot more room. So the bunks, literally the bunks are bigger, the space is greater, but you've got air conditioned, hot and cold, hot and cold running water. Uh, you've got the mod cons. You can switch everything on, all the switches you like. Everything's going to work essentially because you're not going to run out of power, uh, and you're not worried about the having to turn on an engine that's going to make a lot of noise. Uh, these are remarkably silent pieces of technology, and so that 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 means you can stay out there for a long time. And uh, the real the limitation, of course, is how much food you can carry on board. And over time, you know, crews like to have reasonably fresh rations when they can. So that's the major limitation. How much food can you carry? Because you can make water, you can mm -hmm. make oxygen, you can freshen the air uh, and uh, live a reasonably comfortable life, much more comfortable than the current crews of the Colin class submarine, that's for sure. 
John Laxon, thank you. Thank you for uh, joining us tonight. I know it's like the grand final for you at Defence Types tomorrow, so I'll let you go, but I appreciate you being with us this evening.